Although, just once. I didn't visit his workshop. What workshop? Where is it? I drove his enormous fabrication laboratory where he constructed my great machine. Why? Why did you mention this before? In the Trevor's workshop. There's every chance we might find the man there. So you've been to Trevor's place of work then? Yes, just once you understand. But it was an enormous place. Plenty of room to construct a kinesis machine, you see? Where can we find it? We have to go there at once. There's a good chance that we'll find Trevor there. Oh, well, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, I'm sure, as in, I'm sure you're not going to want to hear this. Uh, what? But I have absolutely no idea where the workshop is at all. Did they, did he blindfold you and <laughs> led you to his laboratory? I'm so sorry. I was more than half expecting that. Now you see, I was blindfolded in the carriage the entire way there. He blindfolded you? He wasn't taking any chances then? The place was incredible, the pinnacle of modern engineering! He, even the oil he used was the very best, a special French machine oil that's impossible to obtain in Britain. Ah, the indescribable scent of that imported oil! Perfumers across the world should forget the secret formula and use that instead! What do you think, Mr. Sato, or the machine for your next birthday? I've never used any kind of perfume, Mr. Naruto, and I'm not sure I'd like to start with that. I don't suppose you know even part of the workshop's address, Professor? You don't have a business card from Mr. Trevor, for example? The man was clearly very cautious, Mr. Sato. I'm sure he wouldn't... Ah! ah! Yes, I do! He gave me his business card once! It's right here! Look! <laughs> what? Let me see that! Throw etiquette to the wind, why don't you? Enoch Trevor, engineer. I'm afraid that's all it says. There's no address. Oh. No, well, I can't say I'm surprised. Not even a phone number? I mean... What's the point of this business card, then? A business card is supposed to give out information how you can reach that person, right? Still, this could be useful. Enoch Drabber Engineer. Look at the symbol. Plus, minus, plus, minus, oh, like a battery. What is this? This dark smudge here. I think perhaps it's machine oil. Ah oh yes, possibly. Professor Hairbrain mentioned something about the oil Mr. Trapper uses, didn't he? He said it was a specially imported, very high quality oil that's impossible to obtain in Britain. Yes, that's right. But more importantly, that it's more fragrant than the finest perfume, so... Excuse me a moment. Oh, it doesn't appear to have any scent at all. Don't worry, I... I expect that's just because there's such a tiny amount on here. Okay. So we can't even compare this to anything else. We can't smell anything and... Yeah, machine oil is machine oil, right? They would make stains like that. Any machine oil would make stains like that, I guess. Oops. Uh, are we done here? Uh, do we go back to the experimentation stage? Or the forensics laboratory? Maybe the forensics laboratory. Oh! There's no one here still! Damn it.
Um, do I want to present something to Gina? I don't think so. Have you seen this man? Gina, would you take a look at... Oh, where did it go? Hehe, <laughs> looking for this, although... When did you do that? I wonder if you've got anything else to show me, eh? What do you reckon? Give that back first, please. Okay. So no, okay. Let's show it to... Um... Barok. Oh, Susato san do you want to go on a hot air balloon? With me? Oh look, a flying balloon! I've never seen one in the flesh before! I can't understand how they can fly, and so high up as well. Oh, but think of the view, Mr. Nanodo. You must be able to see for miles and miles. I do think of it, and it terrifies me. I mean, it would be certain death if you fell out. I'm sure they're perfectly safe. After all, they've been invented by some of the brightest minds in the world. Let's not forget that we know at least one has exploded. I'm sure there are other ways to fly. <laughs> What a shame that a symbolic landmark of the Great Exhibition has been damaged like that. Yes, unfortunately the birdcage crashed in the most prominent position possible. It's the gods giving us a warning if you ask me. Man must travel under his own steam and not cut corners with instantaneous kinesis. But imagine what might have happened if the birdcage had landed in a slightly different location. The death toll could have been far worse. So I think perhaps it was a blessing in disguise. Well, the gods are benevolent, obviously. I did say it was just a warning. Man must travel under his own steam, or next time bird cages will rain down on all of you. <laughs> Your faith is much stronger than I realized. Well, how do you think I passed the entrance exam for Yume University? It wasn't by studying alone. <laughs> is it by, like, praying to, to Buddha? Is that what you did? I think we haven't looked up here, right? Yeah, that that's what was missing. Oh, we haven't even looked around. What the heck? Did we not look around? What a terrible explosion it must have been. Even the steel girders have buckled and twisted in the blast. And what they called a birdcage was right in the middle of it all, just here. So I mean, according to our theory, if the birdcage really was in the balloon itself, then there must have been two birdcages, right? One on the stage and one in the balloon. So the question is, where did this one go? Where did the birdcage on the stage go? But look, Mr. Naruto, the metal grill on the floor. Looks as though it's designed to open. It does, doesn't it? If the floor had opened at the precise moment the explosion occurred, the birdcage could have dropped through and disappeared from sight. Oh, okay. I don't think there's any doubt that this was a very elaborate hoax, is there? Unfortunately, we cannot touch it to investigate. <laughs> Why is the music so tense? Oh, Sato san do you want to go on the Ferris wheel with me? I hear that a ride on the Ferris wheel is a favorite romantic outing among young London couples. I think the romance would be slightly spoiled by the abject terror personally, but then I'm not a Londoner. Are you a little scared of heights, Mr. Naruto? It's not that I'm scared, not at all. It's just that staying on the ground seems so much safer. Well, perhaps I shall have to ask Iris and Mr. Shoms to accompany me on it, in that case. Oh, I feel so left out, you're not scared. When you put it like that, part of me does want to give it a try. Oh dear, it is complicated for you, isn't it?
Oh, isn't it exhilarating? All this different architecture from all corners of the world. It does make you feel a bit like an explorer, doesn't it? I know it's all subjective, but the onion-shaped roofs have rather caught my attention personally. It is very subjective, isn't it? Japanese buildings with a wooden paper construction would have excellent ventilation. And I've realized that British buildings being made from brick and stone are very strong and long-lasting. The more you know about how things are done in other countries, the more you understand that you the more you understand your own, I feel. Oh yes, I do agree with you there. But I can't help wondering what an onion does for the roof of a building. I mean, I suppose it's playing on my mind because I don't like the taste of onions. You really oughtn't let your taste in vegetable dictate your taste in roofs, Mr. Narodo. How can you not like onions? It's crazy. This wasn't here yesterday. Really, but I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, it's the cage in which the victim was standing before he was apparently beamed through the air. That's right, the bird cage. According to what Professor Hairbrain said in court, it's made of wood. Or more precisely, Japanese cypress, I think. And despite having been in an explosion and then falling from a great height, it's relatively unharmed. What a wonderfully durable construction, wouldn't you say, Mr. Narodo? I understood that a forensic investigation team had taken it away yesterday to examine it. I suppose they must have brought it back here when they'd finished their work. But sadly not with the body inside it. Sadly? No, that's right. I know we were given strict instructions not to touch anything, but still. This is too important a piece of evidence to overlook. We might need it for the trial. I mean, we don't really need to touch it. Uh. Hold on, Susato. Is it the one we found on the Crystal Tower, or is it the one on the stage? Mm, something seems broken here. Oh. And here. Ah, look here, Mr. Sato. Oh yes, the wood's cracked and broken a little. I suppose because it fell from such a height. Yes, from the height at which the balloon was flying down into the crystal tower below. A fall of about 30 feet, or 9 meters. Leaving the man inside tragically dead. Oh, oh oops. Yeah. Okay, that's all. You'd already met that masked man, hadn't you, Mr. Nerudo? Yes, yesterday, in fact, at Lord Van Zeeks's office. I see. And if... if Kazuma-sama really is still alive, it means that Mr. Sholmes lied to us. I know. We're going to need to speak to him. About that. You're going to have to leave now. Hmm? The forensic investigation team are due to arrive shortly. If they find you here, it will cause problems. What sort of problems? Foreign affairs problems. Well, we could do without that. Alright, we'll be on our way. Let's go, Mr. Sato. Of course. Okay, so that's what... That was it. That wasn't it. <laughs> okay, do we need to... Oh! Huh? What? Um, Gina? We were actually hoping that we could investigate the scene again. Yeah, alright. If it's around here, you can do what you like. Oh, that's alright, is it? I'm gonna be playing with my friend here. Ah, uh, yes, Toby. Apparently we can't look around on the stage now because the forensic investigation team are at work. Can't you do anything, Gina? 
in your capacity as Inspector Lestrade. Well, look, I'd like to help you out. But I'm just a trainee, ain't I? Ain't nothing I can do. Oh, an Inspector trainee. When it suits you, yes. Okay. So that was everything, right? No, it wasn't. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, what is this? Did we investigate this? Here's the scorching on the ground that you mentioned. Okay, it's a green balloon. Do we need to present something to Gina? We'd better not try going up those stairs to the stage area now. If we were to bump into the forensic investigation team, it sounds like it could make trouble. Are we done now? We're not. <laughs> okay, never mind. Let's go to Madame Tuspas again because... Sholmes? Nope, no Sholmes. No Sholmes. Okay, do we go to the forensic laboratory? No. No coroner. This place freaks me out. It just has no music. It's crazy. Okay, where do we need to go? Oh wait, we can present the business card, but we can't present it to... We can't present it to Van Zieks now. Ah, oh, damn it. Uh, maybe we can present it to Gina? I mean, pickpockets and illusionists and magicians, they're the same, right? Right? About this, Gina. Yeah, I'm still learning in letters at the moment. I only know A to E, so if it ain't too much bleeding trouble... Ah, actually, Gina, it's the back of the card that's important. Hey, how come? There's just a dirty old smudge on the back, that's all. It turns out that this is very high-quality French machine oil. It is a very particular scent, apparently. Oh, Toby! <gasps> you don't say. Let's have a whiff, then. Not you, Gina. You sure? I don't smell nothing. No, no, we didn't mean that you should smell it. Oh, right. I mean Toby. Oh, so cute. His sense of smell is so good, he can track people over the oceans, can't he? Professor Hairbrain informs us that this oil is unique to Mr. Drapper's workshop. Oh, so cute! Oh my goodness. I think he's picked up a scent. See, I mean, if he follows the scent of this oil, Toby could lead us to the Dirty Cove's workshop. That's right, that's exactly what we're hoping. Alright then, we'll give it a go. I'll just borrow that. What? Wait, when did you... Once a pickpocket. If I can lead everyone to the driver's workshop, I'll be the boss's boss before next week. Oh, <laughs> ambitious. Oh yes, Gina. I'm sure you'll be promoted. Poor, poor Gregson. Right then, Otto, leave it to me. Sorry? We're gonna get going after the dodgy engineer's cove. Right this mini minute. Oh, but hang on, someone's supposed to be on guard duty here all the time. I'm afraid we can't help. We need to get on with our investigation as well, Gina. Oh, right. Oh well, never mind. I ain't gonna be me. What gets in the neck? Uh, it'll be the boss. 
<laughs> poor, poor Gregson again. Ready, Toby? Got it all in Sandavia. Come on then, boy. See you later. Wait, we're coming with you, what? I do hope the scent of that oil leads to them that leads them to that swindler's workshop. Yes, I hope so too. Ideally before the dog swims across the channel to France. <laughs> uh, so we've done everything. Here and here and here, so maybe we need to find the uh, shawms now. No. The coroner lady. No. <laughs> what do I need to do? Wait. Huh? Wait, what do I need to do? Game. <laughs> Game? I didn't miss anything here, did I? I'm so confused. Okay, according to Reddit, I'm not the only one having problems with stuck here. Apparently there is a notebook here in the lab. A notebook? A notebook. I don't see any notebook. There's no notebook here. What are you talking? Oh! Wait, I specifically went over there to the book and s to see if I checked it. How did I not notice it? Oh my god. Look at this big thick book here. Ah, it appears to be an accounting ledger. It's a record of the forensic investigation team spending, I think. Spending? Oh. What is it? It's clear that the team purchases various equipment and supplies on a monthly basis, but... Well, the one entry seems rather strange. Really? In what way? They're buying 500 scapels every month. What? F 500? They must be working really hard on dissecting poor corpses. I don't know, judicial autopsies are only carried out in certain special circumstances, and scalpel blades can be sharpened too. It does seem a bit strange, you're right. 500 scalpels a month. What could they possibly be using all of them for? What are you doing? Ah! Oh. Sorry, we uh, had something we wanted to ask you, but you weren't here, so... So you thought you'd snoop around? That's acceptable to you people from the East, is it? Oh great, another racist. Well, what do you want? Um, Lord Strongheart told us, you see? That it was you who examined the victim's body. Um, Mr. Asman's body, I mean. So we came to ask you about your findings. On Lord Strongheart's advice. Very well. If the Lord Chief Justice has given his consent, I'll tell you what our investigation revealed. But when we're done, you must leave immediately. Uh, are you related to Barok Van Zeeks? You are very pale. So, you want to know what a forensic investigation team determined from its examination of the scene? The victim, Mr. Odie Asman, who disappeared from the experimentation stage amid an explosion. And the thin Mr. Asman, who appeared moments later part way up the crystal tower. Were without question one and the same person. That is the team's conclusion. Wait, what? What? How? You're a bit fishy, madam. First of all... Okay, well, this plus does not look exactly like the plus on her coat. That is very true. 
Uh, but they both have white hair. What are the coincidences of that, huh? W what are the chances of that? It's a video game, so they must be related, right? <laughs> they must be related. So for you to lie here, maybe it's... Yeah, maybe this is a lie. And also you are like spending government money to fund, I don't know, some sketchy stuff. But, but that can't be right. If it was an elaborate trick, we can only speculate about how it was carried out. Let's see, if two people who looked very similar to each other were involved, they could have made it appear as if one single person had switched places, couldn't they? Very true, but sadly in this instance, that was not the case. The man who disappeared and the man who subsequently reappeared was the same person. And how did you determine that? The fingerprints at the scene make that quite evident. Ah, fingerprints. They're not yet officially recognized as forensic evidence in the British justice system, but one day they will be used as an investigative aid as a matter of course. Oh my, but that would mean that the instantaneous kinesis actually took place. So where does that leave us? My team was tasked with investigating, not drawing conclusions. Ah. Instantaneous kinesis is impossible, and yet the body did move from one place to the other. This hasn't cleared anything up at all. It's made the whole thing even more of a mystery. Uh. What the? Mama, what is this? Uh, uh, wh where did she spring from? And did she just call the doctor Mama? This is law. This is a lawyer, dear. Oh. Um. Hello. To meet you. Uh, Pleased to meet you. I mean. Yes, I am a defense lawyer. Do you not know, that Mama. Yes. Can I cut this one up? Holy crap! What the heck? What? Ah! I've never seen inside an Eastern person before. I want to know what it looks like. <laughs> Holy crap! With a freaking egg. Uh. Okay. Of course you can't. It's a live specimen, as you can very well see. I'm not a specimen, okay? Huh. Boring. I. I think. I just had a near death experience. Oh dear, Mr. Nanado, you're as pale as a corpse. Then let's leave before I'm mistaken for one. Well, I think we've done all the investigating we can hear for now. If we could just determine the whereabouts of Mr. Drabber. I'm sure Gina and little Toby won't let us down. Now then, do you think we ought to try to speak with Mr. Sholmes at this point? We have things to discuss and I'm dying to meet him again. Yes, it's quite possible. He might know something useful, you're right. We ought to find him at Madame de Spells. He's supposed to be walking there. <laughs> it's a temporary waxwork exhibit. Yes, Iris told me all about his latest unusual venture. Interesting. So, what are you doing at the moment, Doctor? Keeping a close eye on things so no impertinent Easterners think they can look around in my office. Are there such impertinent Easterns around? How terrible! <laughs> yes, you. She doesn't mince her words, Mr. Sato. I think perhaps it's time we left. <laughs> she definitely has something to hide. 